Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 10, Jude chapter 1 verse 11, and James chapter 3 verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Help us to heed it and have understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this is 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 10, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan Beersheba. All right. And so this is, I think his name is Abner, Abner, um, when Isbosheth, um, was, um, not doing the Isbosheth was Saul's son, right? So, um, the concubine that Saul had, it's he accused um, Abner of sleeping with him. And so, you know, he was a mighty man of God. Like he was very apparently scary. <laughs> and so he was very powerful and he accused him of this. And he basically swore to make sure that David was over Israel and over Judah, right? Uh, he, he, from that point, he went to David's side and this was like a, a huge transfer of, of power, right? And you don't have to be the king or the queen to hold a lot of power when certain specific people make moves, um, that whole thing can topple over, right? Power and authority are, can be a perception, right? In, in, in that case. All right. And God favors whom he favors, right? He can cause the whole house of cards to fall down in, in one breath. And so that is the first, um, scripture. It says to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. So he was making an oath. He was swearing that he was going to make sure that happens. All right. And so the second scripture that the Lord gave me was Jude chapter one, verse 11. Woe to them for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perish in Korah's rebellion. So um, here it is saying, um, woe to those people who are teaching things improperly to the people of God um, and, and, and seeking selfish gain, right? It says, woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain, meaning they he eliminated his brother, right? Because he chose um, a more of a selfish, self-centered way. And he was jealous of his brother when his brother's offering was accepted, right? So it says, for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain. So um, he, he, he did that to his brother. Um, he also did not offer to God what he his best, right? And in instead chose those things for himself, right? And so it says the sake of gain to Balaam's error. And we know that Balaam's error was trying to curse the people of God, right? And then it says, and perished in Korah's rebellion. And we know that Korah's rebellion is about, um, when the people rose up against Moses and Aaron and their authority and tried to usurp authority for themselves. And so um, this is this is all talking about basically a coup, right? A, a power struggle. God is showing us that there's struggles for power. There are struggles for authority going on. And, and why is this occurring? Um, James chapter three, verse 16, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. So jealousy and selfish ambition, same thing with um, Abner and Isbosheth, how he, um, accused him, you know, whether it was jealousy or ambition on behalf of the son, right? And, and his, his wanting to usurp some power from his father and accuse this mighty man 
of of sleeping with his father's concubine and he was you know he was very upset by that because he was saying you know he dedicated his life to this you know and to be confronted like that and so you know where there's jealousy and selfish ambition that exists you're going to have people accusing people of things they didn't do you're going to have people um um just willing to stoop to low levels to try to make other people look bad but when you do things like that it's gonna come back on you because vindication is the lord remember when abner went over he went over to david's side so that means that the man of god was favored in this coup right it it doesn't matter um, what the the practices, the politics of your job are, or of this world, of this government, of of anything, right? When God is in charge, you don't have to move the pieces of the puzzle, right? You don't have to be the queen. You don't have to be the king, right? You can allow God to make those moves you can allow him to have that final say in that final authority he is going to put everyone in their right positions and he is going to favor you in the end don't worry about the fact that you may not have the power you may not have what you know you think is necessary in order to do well don't think like that right because jealousy and selfish ambition cause very evil things to rise up we need to be about the purposes of God and getting glory for God right it says in Jude 1 verse 11 woe to them for they walked in the way of Cain right that's that way of selfish ambition and jealousy right that is that is every vile practice That is all displayed in the way of Cain, right? It says, woe to them for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain. How do you abandon yourself? That's like giving up your soul for money, right? Abandon themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion, Remember, Korah's rebellion was horrible. Like, I want to say the ground opened up and like swallowed the people, right? Old. So like, it, that was a horrible thing. Um, and it was all because they chose to try to usurp authority um, and usurp power from Moses and Aaron. And, and they wanted to be in charge, right? And God showed himself strong. It was God who did this thing right? Not man. Man didn't show up and fix it. God showed up and fixed it. Amen. So don't allow jealousy and selfish ambition to be any a part of you, right? Be honest with the Holy Spirit. Tell him when you're having problems. Tell him when your desires are wrong. He is going to vindicate you, right? You don't have to be um, a power player or put yourself in any position. No, no, no. God sees you just the way you are and he's going to favor you right where you are. Things are all going to work together for your good. Why? Because he's doing it. He's working it together, not you, right? Just wait on the Lord and he's going to renew your strength. He's going to cause your enemies to be your footstools. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for touching our hearts and our minds like only you can. We love you, Lord God. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, have mercy on us, God. Have grace on us. Help us to stay in right position with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have, if you would like to receive Jesus as your savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen.
All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.